Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dream Style. My name is Joseph, and today I'm going to be talking about some modifications that I need to make to the Philippod design. I plan on having a recording with Nabil uh, going back and forth about design decisions that we can make and change, and unfortunately I forgot to record the video, so I'm just going to talk about some of the things that he mentioned, and hopefully next time I'll remember to hit record. So we went over this design, which is the last design I talked about uh, in the previous episode, and for anyone that's not familiar with the project, I'm trying to make an airtight uh, filament holder design. And this is what I came up with. And some of the things that I was trying to take into account were symmetry. So this one side is symmetric uh, with this other side, and that would help reduce uh, the price of the molds because we only have to make one mold versus two molds. And one of the first things Nabil mentioned was these bridges here. So if you're thinking about making an injection molded part, you have to remember that this has to be ejected, right? So making these ridges is really difficult because if you think about uh, this is basically a negative design, you would have um, a solid piece here and it would have to eject out, which is an issue just because there's multiple ridges here. So this part wouldn't have an issue because you could eject it, but this part and this part would. So he suggested using just a single band that went across each arm. And I think that that, you know, would be a solution to this problem. Another thing, that he talked about which i really didn't consider was the design of the mold itself and so right now i have basically this whole solid piece right and what he talked about was one it would be really hard to machine because these walls are basically three millimeters thick and if you think about the mold for this piece you basically have a solid part you know all the way around this so all of this uh, green is is solid here and you're making this long tapered part down into here to inject the mold and the problem is that this wall is three millimeters. So getting in to cut out that three millimeter thick piece is, is really difficult, right? Because you have to have a really thin, small tool and it has to go really deep down and has to use pretty specialized CNC machines, right? Like a five axis, like all these complicated machines versus something that's more simple that doesn't need that type of thing. So that increases the cost of the mold. And then also just the overall thickness of this also increases the, the cost of the mold. So those were things that, you know, I didn't really consider when I was designing this. I was just trying to, you know, make it however I knew how. And that makes a lot of sense. Another thing that you have to remember is that this has to be tapered. So you have to have a draft angle and having a, a draft angle here would also reduce, you know, how flat this side piece is. And ideally this piece is pretty flat because we're trying to use that as like a leg to support it. Right. So those are some things he mentioned as far as this design goes. And you know, I agree uh, with those desi design decisions. And then some other things you mentioned were, were these uh, would be a challenge as well, because you have to basically either punch these out or do something to be able to make this with injection molded parts. Because again, you don't have any way to inject that. It had to be like an insert or something like that, which again, adds to the cost. And this is also a protrudent like a protruding piece here so one idea he had which is something that i've considered some is if we made magnets here and so one of nabil's suggestions was to reduce this into a, a shorter segment right so if we look at it from this side and basically have this be the single piece and then have a separate piece here that spans across for the spanning piece and then have basically a mirror image of this over here. And the benefit to that is, as I mentioned earlier, this piece is a lot thinner. We don't have to have those long plunge cuts into the CNC mold. And then the same thing here, this is as a separate piece here. So basically this would be a separate piece and then these four leg pieces would be separate pieces. And so then you might ask, you know, how are we gonna combine all these these pieces and get them to work together. And his suggestion was to use magnets. And I really liked that idea initially. And I thought about it, and, you know, we kind of went through it and decided, you know, this was a good way to do things. And then I thought about it some more. And I was I'm kind of unsure about it, mainly because if you think about it, even if we have really strong magnets, you know, we could put a magnet on the end of this and then on the other side, and basically have um, a magnet here, magnet here or metal, you know, and then these would all latch together. And then you could also have a magnet in the middle here to latch these pieces together. But the only issue I see with that is if you pick this piece up, so say say you have a roll of filament in here and then you pick this up or you just grab it here, the likelihood that those pieces will separate is pretty high because most magnets weren't strong enough to hold a kilogram up, right? So it would be pretty likely that that would not stay together essentially. So that's something that I'm considering, you know, I like the idea initially because one, you would have symmetry, it would be easy to insert the magnets. I like magnets in general, they're just easy to use and it's kind of like 
you know, magic that's things magnetized together. I think that's a really cool uh, way to attach things, but I don't know if that's the best solution in this case. So that's something I'm, I'm still kind of thinking about. Another thing we talked about some was this uh, seal here. I think we've already talked about this to some extent, but essentially have like a little bulge here, something like this, to where there's some air here. And the main reason he mentioned for that was so that you could get it on and off relatively easily. I'm still kind of up in the air about whether I want this to be permanently attached. We could use some type of glue or chemical bind, or we could have it where this is removable. But essentially the idea is to make something with like three prongs, something like that, and then have kind of the same design on this other side, and it would come around here. And then we would use have this so that it would overlap some here, and that way we would get an airtight seal on this end, and then this would also be tight uh, with the plastic here. And then this would sit into like a key, so like the side piece would have some type of key, something like that. And then when you compress this, these would kind of spread out a little bit. Let's use a different color there spread out, you know, and this would kind of um, compress maybe a little bit. And then this would also spread out. Essentially, that gives you three different places where you can create an airtight seal. And then the compression force here would also compress around the plexiglass or acrylic here to make that airtight. And the big thing I'm seeing, you know, is a repetitive theme here with our design decisions is that we need some type of compressive force. So I still kind of like this concept where we have this through rod this is going to be expensive if we keep this through rod here. But the thing that I like about it is if you had inserts, right, like the little brass inserts here, and then you could have a shorter rod that wasn't all the way through, the inserts could pull out. And I just like the idea of having this solid metal rod down the middle. These cost a lot more than doing it other ways, but it's something that I'm going back and forth on if I think that it's worth the price trade off, essentially. And that's just kind of the things you have to think about when you're trying to design something like this. Those were kind of the main takeaways that I got uh, from our discussion. Bill, I apologize for not recording it. You know, it was, a, it was a good discussion and we felt like I came away with, you know, a lot of different things that I learned, especially thinking about the depth of that. And, and another thing, kind of going back to the mold design, if I would have left that deeper mold, you, not only is it more expensive to machine, but the tonnage of your injection molding machine has to be a lot higher because the force required to get the plastic to go into these kind of standoff pieces would be a lot higher than if it was just a more flat piece. So that's another thing that that would increase your per unit price. So it's, it's not just the mold cost, it's also how much it costs per piece to produce, which, you know, that would be a recurring problem if it was really expensive versus something that is flat and doesn't require as big of a tonnage of a injection mold machine to, to make. And so that's where we're at. We left off with thinking about a magnetic solution, but I'm kind of up in the air about it. I think that in theory, Theory, it's a good idea, but as far as usability, I, I think that people are going to want to stack filament like this. I mean, I know I stack it on its side a lot, and you can imagine you're having multiple of these stacked up on top of each other. And when you grab it, I, I kind of naturally think people will grab it here. And if you're not thinking about it, I would hate for this to just kind of fall apart. That's my thought process on this. Uh, I still kind of like this overall design where you can tighten it uh, from the sides. And the other benefit to that is if the gasket wore over time, you could increase the pressure, you know, just by tightening it more to help hopefully preserve that airtight seal. Hopefully y'all took something away from this and I hope that you'll consider subscribing and see you in the next one.